Hello friends, my name is Mark Moore. I'm the author of the book, Early Genesis, The Revealed Cosmology. I believe there's a link to it on Amazon in the description part of this video. Now my topic tonight is going to be the, the dates as calculated by, by Bishop Usher for Adam and the flood and, and Orthodox Jews use very similar method. They use the same method, but they come up with slightly different dates. And I'm gonna talk about some of the reasons for that too. But my, I'm going to make the case that the text does not really support using Bishop Usher's methods. I mean, I'm sure he was a great man. He seemed to really care about the truth, about the word of God and what it said. But there's a couple of subtle things. If you, if you don't catch them, you don't see that the text is really showing that, that that is not a good method. The method he used is not a good method to calculate dates. At most, it can give you a what I would call a theoretical minimum date. It's going to be too young. In other words, the dates you will get from using Usher's methods are too young. Now, and, and of course, I, I do this in hopes that what I'm trying to show you is there's a lot of theology about early Genesis that's not in the Bible. Okay, the people that are believing it, a lot of times they don't really understand what it is they believe. And this is very important. The critics of early Genesis, the ones who use it to accuse God, the ones who use it to say Christianity and the Bible are nonsense. They do not understand what they're criticizing. So I'm going to start with a small thing. If you want to learn about a bunch of other stuff like that, I would urge you to read the book. It, it's I'm not even going to talk about everything I've talked about in the one chapter here. I talk about when was Adam, but I want to just here talk about one slice of that chapter. Why Usher's methods do not produce an accurate date. So let's start with the text. Two great genealogies. One is in chapter 5. One is in chapter 11. They both have a very similar format. Uh, and I'm just, I'll make up the numbers here. But uh, Frank lived 130 years and became the father of Joe. After he became the father of Joe, he lived another 500 years so that all the days of Frank were 630 years. That's the format. Now, in, in uh, chapter 5, they leave that last line off. It's a trivial calculation, though. But other than that, it's a very similar format. And so it, it would give the impression, if you're not watching closely, that you could just take the number of years from the birth of one generation to the birth of the next and just keep doing that until you get to a date you you think you know, like most people think the birth of Abraham was about 2000 BC. So somewhere in there, some say a few years before, some say a few years after, but you just go to back and you think, well, I can just do that with all the generations and keep going back and come up with a date for the flood. I can come up with a date for Adam, but you can't. Let me give you a couple of examples why I say that from the text. We go to the end of chapter 11, the start of chapter 12, we read about Terah and Abram, soon to be Abraham, so I'll call him Abraham. But it doesn't have the same format as the other generations. It doesn't have that format. It, it doesn't say he, he just had one son, or in this case, he had so-and-so and he had other sons and daughters. It says, Terah lived 70 years and became the father of Nahor and Haran and Abraham. And so you think, okay, by the time he was 70, he was the father of all three. It's not what it says, though. If you look at Acts, it says that Abraham did not leave Haran until his father died. And it gives the age at which he left, which was 75. That's in Genesis chapter 12, 75 years old when he left. So Minus the lifespan, 75 subtracted from the lifespan of Terah, 205, leaves 130 years. Terah did not get Father Abraham until he was 130 years old. And so th this is why Bishop Usher, he will have a slightly earlier date for the flood than the Jewish rabbis who use the same methods. The Jewish rabbis, they don't take acts into account. They just think, okay, it was. It says 70 in Genesis, so it, we'll use 70. And Bishop Usher could go to Acts and say, no, 
Adam, or excuse me, Abraham was not born until his father was 130 years old. So this is a 60 year difference just on that score. Now, what does this mean though? It means when they give that statement, he became the father of these three. It really is just the date at which he started fathering these sons. There, there were three sons. The first one must have been when he was 70. Abraham was not until 60 years later. And it makes sense because one of them had a son. He died, but he had a son, Lot. Abraham treats Lot like he's his brother, like they're peers. In fact, he calls him his brother on one, in one, at least one occasion in the Old Testament. So the, the phrase, he became the father of Abraham, it, it really didn't mean he became the father of Abraham at that time. It meant he began having sons at that time. And that led to Abraham. Abraham was in that line of sons. So if, if you were just taking, if you were doing the, the genealogy of just Abraham, you might say, gee, I've got a tablet that says at age 70, he became the father of Nahor and Haran and Abraham. But I'm not interested in Nahor and Haran. I'm interested in Abraham. So I'm going to say at age 70, he became the father of Abraham and had other sons and daughters. You're leaving off the two that came first. You're keeping the phraseology that you got from your family genealogical records but they don't say when Abraham was born. They just say, here's the age at which this person started having children. So unless the person you're interested in is the first son of that father, it's going to show a date that's too young. Now, I'm going to give you another example. And, and by the way, there's only two examples where we have enough information to tell that Usher's method won't work. And that is with Terah and his sons and with Noah and his sons. But in both of those cases, Usher's methods give a date that's too young. For example, Genesis goes back there in Genesis chapter five and says, Noah, same thing as it said about Terah, Noah lived 500 years and became the father of Shem, Ham, and Japheth, okay? But later on it says that Shem lived 100 years old and two years after the flood, he gave birth to Eno, uh, his son, I believe it was Enos. So that means that Noah fathered Shem when he was 502, not 500. Now, we know that Ham is the youngest. It says elsewhere that Ham is the youngest. There's also a verse of scripture that tries to tell between Shem and Japheth, which is the oldest, but it's so ambiguous that people translate it differently. But I'm telling you, Japheth was the oldest. If, if Noah began having sons at 500, Ham was the youngest, and Shem was at 502, then Japheth must be the oldest. Noah had Japheth when he was 500, he fathered Shem when he was 502, and he fathered Ham sometime later. So if you're doing a genealogy, uh, but, you, but Shem is the one you're interested in, you just, you don't, you say Noah at 500 years old, became the father of Shem, and he had other sons and daughters, or the sons in this case. So, But you would lose two years if you do that, because Noah had Shem at 502, not at age 500. So in both these cases, the listed date is just the date that person began fathering children. It may not be the person listed as the next patriarch, might not be the one who was born that year, but he began, but the, his father began to have children that year. And this one guy was the next in line. So the, there's only two examples. Both of them undermine Usher's methods. Just imagine yourself, you, you're Noah or you're Terah or Abraham. These, these are the people I believe assemble the tables in Genesis chapter five and Genesis chapter 11. You've got all these records from your family. They all read about like what you saw. They list the age the person began having children, and then they listed all the children. Yours may have been fifth in line, but you don't know what year he had your particular ancestor that you're interested in. You just know the year he started having sons. And so that's what you put. 
And then instead of putting all the son's names in there, you just put the one you're interested in, even though he didn't happen, he didn't come along until 50 years later, 60 years later, more or less. But you put him and then you say, and he had other sons and daughters. So they did not intend for time to be tracked the way Bishop Usher and the rabbis are tracking it. Now, I do believe that, that they used the genealogy to track time, particularly the one in chapter five. And I, but I don't want to get into exactly how they did that. Get the book if you're interested. Right now, I just want you to take away Usher's methods do not, do not produce an accurate date. They may produce what would be called a theoretical minimum, which would be the truth would be somewhat older than that. Uh, the way I'm using them, there's also a theoretical maximum, and that would be Adam is at most 14,000, around 14,000 years ago. Uh, the flood, maybe seven, six, seven year, thousand years ago. Uh, and you may think, well, gee, that's, that's still way too recent for the flood. It's not if you read the book. If you see the Christ-centered model, it, it's really not. If you see what the text is really saying, it actually fits quite well with what we know uh, about the world, what we know about mankind. It, the problem is not the Bible and the world. The problem is people are not reading the text very closely. They're making erroneous assumptions about it because they don't read it very closely. And uh, they make it say things that it doesn't really say. And because of that, people accuse God falsely. And that's not good for them. It's not good for the church. It's not good for anybody. But I don't want to segue, get too much out of that. I just too much too far from my subject to field. I just wanted you to see that those dates that, that Bishop Usher have calculated, they're not good dates. The method that he was using is not a method that the people who compiled the genealogies expected you to use.